Welcome back to the Brookland Local. We're going to be here in round three. I am Charisma Chack here with Kevin Miller. We are back for a round three matchup. Both of these opponents 2-0 and oh so far, having a very good tournament and excited for this match. Yeah, very excited. As we have been all day, <laughs> we're in round three out of our six rounds here today um, at our local. Very excited, as you said, kind of reiterating that <laughs> there have been a lot of cool teams that we've seen today um, in team choices, but we're going to calm it down a little bit. We're going to have two a little bit more standard teams here today. Uh, that being on Phillip's side here, we're going to have the POV from with that Arcanine Hisui, Tornadus, Fluttermane, Iron Hands, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, and Urshifu Single Strike. And we, for on Carl's side, we have a very uh, common archetype. I believe a couple regional championships with this uh, team. Uh, Ar Arcanine, Hisui, Chempal, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Rillaboom, Fluttermane, and the Tornadus Incarnate. Yeah, both of these teams showcasing the Arcanine Hisui, which I think is super, super cool. I think Arcanine has had a place in the meta now for a little bit, and not to really anyone's surprise, right? Um, having the access to that stab rock slide, that boosted rock slide from Arcanine just does so much damage, and I think having the that damage output with something like a Choice Band and having access to Intimidate as well just makes Arcanine a well-rounded Pokemon. Um, and even though Urshifu is in the meta, as we kind of talked about in round one as well, Surging Strikes, you know, it doesn't want to take it. Um, but with the power of Terrestrialization, right, and you have five other Pokemon on the team, you have ways to position your Arcanine. And if you are able to get into a position, um, as we see here in lead from Carl's and uh, Arcanine Fluttermane coming out, if you're able to position your Arcanine, it does a lot of damage uh, into something like Phillip's lead, which is the Tornadus and Fluttermane. Yeah, two very um, common leads that we see um, in today's meta between Flutter Arcanine and the Flutter Tornadus. Um, I guess the variation between Arcanines is very interesting actually because we see both are choice banded, but one opts for the Terra Normal and has extreme speed, the other one has the Terra Fairy um, so, and Terra Blast. So, very uh, cool differences between these two Arcanines. Yeah, and I think those differences really showcasing um, how the players really want to play their teams. For example, uh, Carl has something like the um, like you said, the extreme speed and the head smash. Um, instead of the Terra Blast, maybe you don't want to hit, uh, maybe you have, like, you're confident that you can hit Iron Hands enough with your Fluttermane and you're not really worried about hitting it. Uh, wow. You know, on Phillips' team, they have the Terra Blast on their Arcanine and they want to throw an Iron Hand a little bit more. Uh, maybe because they have, like, something like the Urshu uh, Single Strike. Uh, but we are going to see a Terrasalization here, turn one, um, from Phillips, or excuse me, from Carl's Fluttermane there on a Tailwind from Phillips' end. Yeah, we see one of the Flutter mains go for the Terra Fairy, not wanting to take a Shadow Ball. But the Shadow Ball goes into the Arcanine, doing very, very good damage. And we see uh, Carl's Flutter Main locking in the Terra Fairy Dazzling Green, doing a lot of damage itself, picking up good chip into both these um, opponents. And the Bandit Rock Slide just picks up both Mons on turn one, and Carl gets a huge advantage here. Yeah, that critical hit not mattering too much on the Tornadus there. That Dazzling Gleam, I think, um, just does so much damage. And even you, as Philip, you have to make a decision there on that turn one. You know your Pokemon are most likely going down that turn, and you have to make a decision. Is it worth it to Tailwind? Yes. And I think the answer is always yes, as you said. Like, you want the speed control right. Now your Ogre Pond and your Arcanine are guaranteed faster than this Fluttermane Arcanine. Um, and Carl kind of has to play around that. That chip damage that you got with your Fluttermane Shadow Ball um, is, is enough here on this Arcanine where you are you feel like you're in a confident position where something like a Rock Slide and an Ivy Cudgel from your end here on Phillip's end, excuse me, is able to pick up a KO on Carl's end. Yeah, Philip gets the uh, max optimization of his Tailwind turns with these two Pokemon here and can pick up, like, he lost both uh, of his two Pokemon on turn one, but he can pick up two knockouts right here as well, being with the speed advantage. But we do see the Arcanine of Carl's end switch out for the Tornadus, maybe a defensive switch in, maybe trying to get a Tailwind up later of his own. Um, we see the Fluttermane lock protect here, stalling a turn of Tailwind. And I think this is super cool as well, because if you do see something like a Cudgel, oh, we see a Blitz instead in the Tornadus lock, calling the switch in. Um, if this is a double up, oh, burn. I don't think that takes it. If, if it depends you know. on what this ogre pond targeted into, if it clicks a damaging move or not. We see Arcanine take a lot of recoil, and we see the ogre pond actually go for the swords dance, trying to make, you know, your two Pokemon behind, trying to get this attack boost to hope you help, hopefully help you going forward. But the, the Tornadus does hang on after the burn chip. But I think that's super important. Is this Tornadus essentially got in to come in, not, not for free, right? But you bring in Tornadus and you are able to match Tailwinds. Uh, and I think it was really smart of Carl to bring in the 
uh, the tornadoes in the back because you're able to delay your tailwind turns and now you have one extra turn above Philip here. Yes, this Arcanine is locked into Flare Blitz for the rest of the game. Cannot click E speed here to pick off this tornado. So tornadoes, tornadoes is very free to match tailwinds and hopefully give Carl the advantage going forward. Yeah, and with that Rocky Helmet on the Tornadoes too, that extra amount of chip does actually add up against something like Flutterman in the late game. Uh, we are going to see a translation from here from, uh, from Philip. I think the thing about these Tailwind games as well is that they're so quick. Um, once you get up Tailwind, it's kind of put your foot on the gas pedal and just go. Yeah, um, we saw Swords Dance. We saw the Swords Dance from the Ogre Pond, you know, being slow for... I, you could consider that slow for one turn, um, but just... There's so much damage coming out from both these sides. The Fluttermane, the Arcanine, the Bandit, these plus two. Uh, we do see a Shadow Ball from Carl, able to pick up a KO on the Arcanine there. But this Ogre Punk could just go to town. Yeah, this locking in the Terra Water plus two Ivy Cudgel into the Fluttermane, most certainly picking up the knockout here. Um, but Fluttermane did what it needed to do. I mean, uh, Phillips down to his last Pokemon in this uh, Ogre Pond here. So we'll see if it's enough. Yeah, and this burn is going to be able to pick up the Tornadus, but like we said for Philip, now Carl gets a free switch in instead of Philip this time. Um, and that's going to be into the Arcanine and the mysterious Pokemon that Carl has in the back. Yeah. If I were to take a guess, it's probably something like that Chien Pao or maybe that Urshifu even, um, having access to that Sash or something like the Urshifu just to do a lot of damage is, just makes a lot of sense. And it is going to be the Urshifu. We see the Urshifu come in. We see the Ogre Pond go down to minus one, but... Uh, this Arcanine cannot terrestrialize, terrestrialize is low HP, so this uh, Ogre Pond can take, is faster, can take it out. We'll see if this uh, Urshifu can do enough damage to this um, Ogre Pond to win the game, because Ogre Pond does threaten with super effective damage. Yeah. We see the Protect from the Urshifu. If Ogre Pond calls this and goes into the Arcanine, we can see a very different endgame. We see Bandit Extreme Speed go into the Ogre Pond doing good chip, but Corn Leech picks up and gets a little bit of health back. Um, credit definitely not mattering there, but we have a 1v1 here, and if this Ogre Pond is bulky enough to live a hit from this Urshifu, I think we could see Philip taking the game here. Yeah, and I think that was a very interesting turn from Carl there, where it's like, you want to make sure that you're protecting against the uh, the, uh, the incoming Horn Leech from the Ogre Pond. We see but close combat don't... not pick up, and we'll see a Horn Leech, I, get, uh, I assume, go into this um, Urshifu and take the game for Philip. So after losing two Pokemon, on turn one, the Tailwind was, and terrestrialization and setup from this Ogre Pond really put Philip in a dominating position to take this game. Yeah, and I think like the Ogre Pond lifting that obviously is like a big part of it, but I think also Philip able to be call those turns where really momentum turns where I, I think that's what really exemplifies a good Tailwind player is taking advantage of your Tailwind turns. And I think Philip did a great job of uh, showing that in that game getting the correct calls, targeting the correct slots, making sure that you're horn leeching, swords dancing at the right time. Because like if you didn't get a swords dance in that position, you might not kill with the horn leech. Yeah, it's very risky too, to when you're down two Pokemon like that, you feel like you want to get the most damage as quickly as possible to make up uh, like some like progression in the game. But going for the passive swords dance there really let Overpon pick up kills later in the game and pick up the game for Philip. Yeah, and it, exactly, like taking advantage of those Tailwind turns doesn't always mean clicking the attack button. Sometimes that means setting up because you know your opponent is going to kind of try to protect a stall your Tailwind. Taking advantage of those turns really exemplifies a good Tailwind player. Um, and I think, like, a lot of people would argue that the Tailwind Mirror is, like, one of the most unskillful things. I, I, I would argue the opposite. I think Tailwind Mirrors are some of the most skillful, like, levels, like, play high-level play of VGC that you can see. Um, not only, it, like, at a very basic level, it's positioning who gets Tailwind up first, who gets it up second, what are you doing with your Tailwind turns. It's a very high-level game yeah. uh, gameplay, I think. Conserving Tailwind as well, like, maybe one team is able to get up Tailwind once, where the other only two, and managing those turns and getting the most out of them is very, takes a lot of skill, so. Yeah. Although these games are going quickly because it's such fast-paced offense, there is, don't like get it twisted, there is so much skill going involved. In yeah, exa time. exactly, don't get it twisted, like, Arcanine, Bandit, Rock Slide, you know, is, is Bandit, Rock Slide. There's nothing really else to it. Um, but the idea of positioning these Pokemon together and kind of seeing how they all flow together is really, really important, I think. And both these players did an amazing job in game one, and I'm really curious to see how Carl's going to adapt in this game, too. Yeah, I think Carl had a way to win that game. The Protect on the Urshifu uh, when uh, 
the Arcanine was targeted was an interesting play. We'll see if Carl adjusts or just tries to optimally uh, manage his talent turns a little better this game. But we see the Torn Arcanine lead from Carl will switch up this game. And we see a Tornadus and Iron Hands lead from Philip. And I think this is a really well adjusted lead from both players. I think Carl expecting the same lead as last game, realizing Arcanine Tornado is just mashing the tailwind might be a little bit better. Let's try this out. But Philip realizing that saying, I'm gonna lead Iron Hands because Arcanine's not really really doing that much to me. You eat like last game, right? Carl had the, the the free option to click rock slide and get a KO on both. Um, but in this position, right? You're banded, so you can only click Rock Slide or Flare Blitz. But we actually are going to see the big taunt from Philip here. So that means if the Tornadus did go for a Tailwind, it's not going to be able to. But instead, we see a Bleak Wind Storm, realizing that taunt threat. Carl maybe uh, knowing how his uh, Tornadus is trained against others, expecting maybe the taunt. Just be like, I feel like it's a very bold play, not knowing Tornado speed uh, tiers, to just click taunt on turn one. But uh, Carl maybe calling the taunt, locking the Bleak Wind Storm, getting good chip damage there. Yeah, I th again, Carl played it very safe, where it's like, I'm, we haven't had the Tornado speed tie yet, or speed tiers yet, so I'm just going to play it safe and click Bleak Wind. I know the taunt option's there, just in case you're 252 max speed. Uh, yeah, like, I'm not going to risk the taunt. And we see the Arcanine switch out for the Flutter main here. That um, Saw a fist bump from Philip. I That might be a heavy <laughs> slam. Could be a heavy slam into that slot, calling it. But we see the Flutter Main's booster special attack proc. And we will see a Tailwind coming from Philip's Tornadus after clicking Taunt last turn. Um, I don't think the speed will affect. I oh, Iron Hands is <laughs> oh, going first. Oh, and Philip calls the Flutter Main switch and heavy slams that slot. Very good call from Philip. Not picking up the Flutter Main because they intimidate but a very good prediction from Philip there. But that's a lot of momentum, and with Tailwind on Philip's side, we actually saw the Iron Hands move faster than the Tornadus. This is a very fast Iron Hands, ladies and gentlemen. And I think Philip is one bleak wind storm away from KOing a Fluttermane and wild charging the Tornadus slot. We see the Tornadus swap out back into the Ar Arcanine, recycling this Intimidate into the Iron Hands, but Let's see what this Tornadus locks into. If it lands a Bleak Wind Storm, it could just pick up the kill here. But we see the Flutter Main protect. Yeah, and I think this is very safe from Carl. Carl's kind of played safe, and Philip is really capitalizing on that, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if Philip went for a Drain Punch, for example, in this, um, to this Arcanine here. Philip has been really able to get each of these Tailwind turns really exemplifying. Instead, we see a Wild Charge. Not getting another read, but still does a lot of damage to this Arcanine, even though it's at minus two now. Uh, yeah, minus two Wild Charge, still picking up decent damage into this Arcanine. Uh, Philip just feels look. He just looks really comfortable right now. It feels he hasn't had to switch. His tornadoes and iron hands are in control, in control of speed, and I think he's just in a really good spot to keep up this momentum here. Yeah, and the iron hands realizing I don't want minus two to really be on the field. I'm gonna preserve its HP. I'm gonna switch an ogre pawn. What are you really doing to me? This bleak wind storm is most likely gonna pick up Fluttermane, which would be the main thing th thing threatening him anyways, or excuse me, Phil threatening Philip anyways. <laughs> we see the uh, terrestrialization onto the uh, Torn here, going Terra Steel, opting for a more defensive Terra, feeling threatened by maybe a Rock Slide from the opposing Arcanine. Um, we, oh, we see Extreme Speed. It resists and the it Extreme lives. Speed and hangs on. What a terrestrialization. The Bleak Windstorm lands and picks up the Flutter Main. The Arcanine living at 1 HP there is also super big, that being a critical hit. So both trainer spreads showing in full, you know, Array here. <laughs> yeah. Philip with the steel trust position again, getting these turns correct, realizing that Carl is probably going to go for extreme speed to get rid of this Tornadus out of the tailwind. Not getting the kill with the Trastalization Steel is so big, but we do see Urshifu coming in here, and I think that's where Ogre Pond switching in for Philip is also so big. You don't have Follow Me, but Urshifu has to make a choice here, where if you go for Aqua Jet and the Tornadus, right, the Ogre Pond is able to go for something like a Horn Leech or a Sword Stance, and because this Arcanine locked in extreme speed, it does a lot to Ogre Pond, as we saw in that game one, but Spiky Shield is so threatening that it's just like, there's, there's so much on these Tailwind turns. Yeah, we'll see what each opponent locks in here. I think you might have to preserve Tailwind here with this Tornadus. You will die to another extreme speed as much as it's resisted. This is a Bandit Arcanine after all. It's so scary though, right? Because if you do read preserving this, this Tornadus, um, what Carl could do is they could just double into the Ogre Pond, right? If you do go for a Spiky Shield protecting against the Extreme Speed, Urshifu could break through that Protect and go for a close combat. We see the Intimidate coming here from Philip's Arcanine and a terra Terrestrialization coming from Carl. Um, this is the Urshifu going Terra Water, trying to get the most out of this uh, Choice Scarf. Oh, actually, sorry, not Choice Scarf. Uh, Mystic Water uh, 
Second strike. Do you think this is an Aqua Jet? We see Extreme Speed into the Ogre Pond. And we see a Swords Dance. Go Philip going for the Swords Dance again with the Ogre Pond, very much like last game. And we see a close combat. It's a close combat. And it does not pick up the Ogre Pond. The Ogre Pond able to sur uh, survive two hits. And put it, uh, this is a very bulky Ogre Pond. Tailwind is gone, so uh, Carl right back in the game here with Tailwind ending on Philip's side. Yeah, Carl's not out of it yet now because it, now it comes down to Arcanine Speed Ties. Who's, who's really winning the Speed Tie? Because, again, it's the same situation as last turn where if you do decide to protect with your Ogre Pond here, Arshifu could break through that, right? You, if you spike your shield, like if, if Carl's Arcanine is faster with Extreme Speed, then you th you you, th uh, you could lose Ogre Pond or you could lose... Uh, Tornadus, but we are actually going to see the Arcanine switch up from Carl's side here and go into the Tornadus. Maybe not thinking Extreme Speed would pick up the Ogre Pond from that range, but we see Philip blocking the Extreme Speed, doing so much into minus one defense, Urshifu, and we see Aqua Jet straight back into the Arcanine. Terrorwater Aqua Jet oh, picks up the, the KO. KO. But what does the Ogre Pond go for here? Phil I'm so scared. Horn Leech into the Urshifu, taking it out, gaining some health back, and we have a... 2v2 in our hands. Yeah, so like while that does seem scary and these trades do seem scary, Carl unfortunately does have a low HP Tornadus, or excuse me, a low HP Arcanine against an Iron Hands uh, that's still in the field and the Ogre Pond that just healed oh, up. Like the Iron Hands is at half HP almost, but it's so hard I think for Carl to make it their way back into this game. Yeah, we see the Iron Hands come out for the fake out pressure. You can fake out pretty freely into the opposing Arcanine, which is banded, and I think you could just clean, uh, pick up the game from here. I mean, Tornadus threatens decent damage, but not enough into this Iron Hands where I feel like Philip feels threatened at all. Yeah, and like from Carl's end, right, you could go for Bleakwind crits and drops and all sorts of things that Bleakwind likes to do. But unfortunately, this fake out is going to be able to pick up the KO on Arcanine no matter how much uh, Philip is a million percent intimidated. Uh, this Arcanine is just perfectly within that range. Uh, I think that's going to be able to seal fill up this game here. Um, the Ogre Pond, right, protecting against that Bleak Wind Storm uh, just to, you know, secure any damage not dying to the Bleak Wind Storm. Um, it has to hit first, of course, though, um, and it is going to, I believe, actually touch the Iron Hands. Unfortunately hand. miss, but, I mean, even if it lands, uh, I think the Iron Hands is in a very good position to remain alive and threaten with Wild Charge the next turn, but we actually see the Iron Hands switch out here, maybe uh, preserving Fake Out for later. Which I think is super smart as well, right? Because Carl's end, um, even though they have uh, yeah, something they like the... They actually have something like the Vaki Helmet, right? So preserving that Fake Out actually makes sense compared to the uh, the Covert Cloak. Ogre Pond is going to avoid the attack. That's kind of what you needed to get yourself back in the game, even if you had a chance. Um, we do see the critical hit into the wrong slot there. A little late as well. You would like to see that in the Iron Hands. Uh, Carl playing it out, I respect it. Uh, but Philip played this game amazingly. Yes, and Philip can clean up the game here with a fake out and Ivy Cudgel and secure the 2-0 victory. Um, just taking full advantage of his uh, Tailwind turns, and I think the Iron Hands here as an adjustment was a very good bulky piece for this game too. Yeah, I'm very surprised at how Philip played, but also very uh, impressed with their play is I think the more correct word. I think not only like plays like the Heavy Slam obviously stand out, but I think Philip's overall consistency with taking advantage of their Tailwind turns was super, super cool. Yes, and we see Philip take the set 2-0 and yeah, just we, like we said, the Tailwind Mirror is a good one, shows a lot of skill, and Philip just played really well. Like you said, the, the Heavy Slam play as the highlight of that match really shows how Philip deserved to win that game. And I think like with Philip and how they really position around their turns, it's kind of like what we talked about before. It was like, yes, you click Tailwind, you click damaging buttons, but turns like that Swords Dance, turns like those Protects, really managing your pieces on your board, managing those um, those those pieces and when they're going to go off, when those big damage buttons are going to go off, I think is a large part of why Tailwind is so strong in this meta as well, is you're able to do so much damage so quickly, um, and you're able to outspeed everything in the meta. Um, being able to position that, I think, is, is a great uh, showcase of skill in, in players. Yes, and Philip, like, mastering... Uh like his ter like taking optimal Terra's, like the Terra steal from the Tornadus to, because you know your opponent has to go for extreme speed there to conserve their Flutter main. Going for the Terra steal, living the uh, Terra, the extreme speed, such a big play from uh, Philip there, and really shows why he deserved to take that match. 
Yeah, 2-0 nonetheless as well. Very, uh, very, very well played and very, very deserving. Congratulations to Philip. Uh, Carl, well played as well. They, I, I don't want to count them out either. They also played really, really well. Of course. And only 2-1, have the rest of the tournament to go. Uh, Carl has shown very good skill, and I would not be surprised if we see him again later in Top Cut. Yeah, and we have three more rounds to go still, but we are going to cut to another quick break very soon. But don't go anywhere. We're going to be back with round four very soon here at the Brookland Local. Stay tuned. We'll be back.